Hi guys, so today we're going to be making some mead, or as it's also known, honey wine. Now mead is a very simple fermented beverage. It uses honey as the base sugar needed to make the alcohol, and it's a lot simpler than, for example, making beer, which is a lot more difficult. This comes to the cost though of time. It does take a little bit longer typically to ferment properly than, for example, beer does. It doesn't require heating or specific temperatures, and in the end, it really just is a very nice product to drink. I had a lot of fun making this. Um, my friend Colin is actually helping me make this mead today. We ended up doing this as gifts for people for Christmas, and in the end, the version I'm showing you today, we ended ended up with a semi-dry mead with an alcohol percentage of around 11%. So let's get started in making mead. And we'll start by looking at our main ingredient, which is our honey. Now the honey I'm gonna be using here today is a raw mesquite honey from a local apiary. We were really lucky to get our hands on this stuff. It's entirely up to you if you wanna experiment with different types of honey, this will give you different types of mead in the end. I'm using for a five gallon batch of mead, about 15 pounds of honey. Now this will yield a semi-dry mead, so it'll be slightly sweet, but mostly dry. If you want it to be a little bit sweeter, feel free to add more honey. Doing so, you'll end up with a sweeter, more alcoholic mead in the end. So since this is a raw honey, we really don't want to heat it. Doing so will denature some of the enzymes and in the end really alter the flavor of the honey. Now if we actually really break down what we're going to be doing for making mead, all we're going to do is add this honey to some water with some yeast and some other additional ingredients. But before we get into that, let's focus on some preparatory steps. One of the main things we're going to need is a vessel for fermenting our mead. Now I recommend using a homebrew bucket which has a proper seal lid and a hole for an airlock which will help keep the germs out from entering our mead and infecting it as it ferments. We're additionally going to need some yeast nutrient. Now when making beer there are vitamins and enzymes that come from the grains that actually help the yeast reproduce and actually produce alcohol efficiently. Now in honey those elements just aren't there. With the primary pieces we can move on to the most important and probably least sexy part of making mead which is the sterilization. To sterilize I'm using a no rinse sterilization solution which is specifically known as star sand. This stuff is great and you'll find it at your local homebrew store or online and it's really one of the most important components to ensure that you have a really good mead in the end and you just haven't wasted your time and money. Now I've added the star sand solution into the primary fermenting bucket with some warm water as the instructions call for. I've also used this opportunity to sterilize the lid, a ladle, a rubber spatula, our airlock, anything else that I think that we might need, a spoon. Another consideration that we need to take into account is that we're using raw honey. This means that the honey itself contains its own set of microorganisms that may interfere with the yeast. Now normally this would be eliminated through boiling but as I mentioned before we really don't want to heat the honey this can change the flavor we don't really want that so to get around this I'm using what's known as Camden tablets well this will help disable the reproduction of microorganisms that are in the honey before we add the yeast so have the additional benefit of getting rid of any excess chlorine in the water this stuff is used in winemaking and can also be picked up from a home brew store so once everything's properly sterilized it's time to add our honey to our water start by pouring five gallons of water into our fermentation bucket and then next we just add our honey in and it's as simple as that. Lastly, we'll finish with our additions, which we have one teaspoon of yeast nutrient and two Camden tablets. Using our sterilized ladle, we can mix the ingredients up as best as we can. And it doesn't hurt at this point to take a sample sugar measurement. This will give us a concentration of how much sugar is actually in the solution. And from this, we can use this as a baseline for our original gravity, which in the end will help us calculate the final alcohol percentage of the mead. Once we're done with that, go ahead and seal the lid on and add the airlock. It doesn't hurt to give it one additional shake to just kind of mix everything up. We're gonna let this bad boy sit for 24 hours, at which point it's time to get ready to pitch the yeast. So the next day we're ready. The yeast is the agent that will turn the sugars in our honey into alcohol. Now most beer yeasts can handle an alcohol percentage up to about eight to 10% before the alcohol concentration starts to kill the yeast itself. So to make sure we get a little bit more bang from our buck and actually more conversion of sugar into alcohol from our honey, I'm using what's known as a champagne yeast, which in principle is a strain that is able to to stand uh, alcohol concentrations up to about 18%. With the amount of sugar that we're adding in from the amount of honey that we've added in, we should be well below this tolerance. So this yeast will be able to get us there. Now, once again, before working with the yeast, we need to make sure that we thoroughly sanitize everything the yeast will come into contact to. And since the mead mixture is not heated, it's actually at room temperature, as for example, it would be heated in beer making, as it cools down, you'd pitch the yeast. We need to activate the dehydrated yeast by adding it to some warm water. So follow the instructions on the pack it for the best results. Once everything's ready, we can actually pitch our yeast into the prepared honey water and we can let the fun begin. Give it a good rock to kind of mix everything together, uh, replace the airlock and bam, we're ready to rock. This stuff should sit for about 10 to 14 days untouched 
give it time to go through primary fermentation. After about two weeks in primary fermentation, it's time for secondary fermentation. Now this step is technically optional, so if you want to just omit this and just wait until you start bottling, that's completely fine. But it will help us get a better overall flavor and will allow us to kind of flavor our mead and play with it a little bit more. Essentially what we're doing here is we're removing the mead from the primary fermentation bucket, pulling it away from all the dead yeast that's accumulated at the bottom of the bucket during primary fermentation. It will also really give us a chance to kind of put them into smaller bottles and play with the flavors. So the process is pretty simple. Once again, we're going to need to sanitize all the equipment coming into contact with the mead. In our case, this is the secondary fermentation jugs, as well as our siphoning equipment and airlocks. Once everything is sanitized, we can use a siphon to pull the mead from the primary fermenter and siphon it into a secondary fermentation vessel. I'm using one gallon glass jugs here so that we can easily have five different types of mead and be able to kind of divvy this up. But if you want to, you could just use another five gallon bucket. When siphoning, it's helpful to maintain a height difference so that gravity can kind of do the work of transferring the liquid from one vessel to another. It's also a good idea to siphon from the top and slowly follow the level of the mead down in the primary fermenter. This will ensure that we don't suck up any of the dead yeast chilling at the bottom of the primary fermenter and just transfer it into the secondary fermentation vessels. Also, it's not a bad idea at this point to do a measurement of the sugar concentration using a hydrometer or a refractometer. At this point, I was measuring an alcohol percentage of about 8%, which was good, but it kind of indicates that it wasn't entirely done yet. Now, once the jugs are full, we can go ahead and add in our flavoring agents. And we ended up going with a few different variations. We left a few of them plain as just kind of control meads, but we also had one with some pomegranate juice added, um, one with some almonds and raisins and orange peel, and another with blood orange and raisin. Feel free to add whatever flavorings you want. You know, you can really go all out here, or you can just leave it plain. Once all of our jugs have been filled and we're happy with the flavorings, we can go ahead and place the lids and airlocks onto them. And we're just going to let these sit for an additional two weeks. Now, after about two weeks, technically the fermentation should be close to done, but it's not going to taste super great at this point. It should probably taste a little bit like cheap wine, very alcoholic and strong and very like cutting in the nose. You can of course drink at this point, um, but it won't be very nice. Letting it sit in jugs for longer will allow the alcohol and everything to kind of mellow out and the mead to really develop a nice flavor. Some people insist on letting this stuff sit for about six months to a year, but unfortunately for me, time was a constraint here. Um, so we immediately bottled a few jugs to hand out as our Christmas gifts. Now to bottle, it's best if you can find a bottling bucket. Essentially, this is a, just a normal bucket, but with a spout. If not, you can try using a bottle filler or you can also try to just sanitize a funnel and a pitcher, fill it up the bottles this way. But at the risk of sounding like a broken record, we really need to sanitize everything that's going to touch the mead, including the bottles themselves, the bucket, the siphon, everything we're going to be using to transfer from the secondary jugs into the bottling bucket. Once everything is again sanitized, we're going to use the siphon to transfer from the secondary fermentation vessels into our bottling bucket, at which point we can just turn the spigot and then just start filling our bottles with mead. Now, since this mead wasn't 100% finished, I opted to use swing top bottles, but in principle, you could cap them if you choose. Once we've bottled our mead, we're done. Now, this can sit for longer including even in the bottles and it will become better over time. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're new here please consider subscribing or maybe even just watching some of my other videos. If you feel inclined to help me further I've attached a link to my Patreon down below. I'm really trying to get new equipment for this channel since the stuff I've been using is definitely a little janky and old. Well, anyways thank you again for watching and I hope that I'll be able to give you guys another video soon. All right bye.